the whole point here is we're supposed to write a collection called a linked list. And what I want to do is I want to write a class. So we have this little structure called the list nodes, and we can chain them together. That's great. But I don't want to sit here in main and write all these careful pointer manipulation methods. I want to just wrap all that up in a class and call it a linked list class. And it will internally manage pointers and nodes, and it will do the, the work so that these things will implement behavior that I think of as being a list. So I guess what I'm really trying to say is, you know, we just finished writing something called array list, where we made an array and we rewrote vector, right? That's what we just did last week or I guess earlier this week, sorry. But now what I want to do is I want to rewrite all of the same operations that a vector has, but instead of using an array to store the data, I want to use a chain of these list node thingies, and I want to use that to store the data, but I can implement all the same operations using that representation, and I want to call that class that does that linked list. Okay? That's what we're going to do today. Okay, so what you do in this class, in this linked list class, you have a pointer, a list node pointer called front. And it is the pointer to the first list node of data. And then those nodes point to each other all the way across. And so we'll modify front or front next or whatever as needed to put things into the, into the list. So if you go to the project for today that I'm, that I'm working on, then it, let me open this up. Okay. Uh, let's see. We are going to linklist.cpp and linklist.h. Okay. So we have a linklist.h, and what we have here is I've copied over list node. I just put it into this linklist.h, and what I did is I've got list node has a data and a next. I also wrote a constructor where you can pass in the data and the next if you want to when you're creating a node. That makes it a little easier to manipulate these things, but it's still just a little list node struct. It's basically the same, and then we're going to use that to write a class linked list. And if you look at these methods, they should look pretty familiar, right? These are the methods we did for ArrayList, and they're the methods that you've been using in Vector. Let's write them using nodes, okay? And the only private variable we're going to have, the only member variable we'll have, is this list node named front, pointer to the first node of the list. Okay, how do we do some of these things? Well, the first one I want to try to do is add. Remember what add does? Add goes to the end of the list and puts a new piece of data at the end, right? Okay, well, let's back up for a second. If you're adding something to the list, maybe it means we should think about, you know, how does the list start? What is the original state of the list when it's first created? So, like, we have to write a constructor probably, right? And we have this front pointer. When you originally create a list, what do you think I should set the front pointer to be? I don't have any data, right? How about no? Just point to nothing. I don't have any data here. There's no nodes. So just think of this like, you know, in my file I had a second ago, I had like list node star node one. And I just set that to null to indicate there's nothing in the list. But I call it front here, okay? All right, so now when you want to add something to the end of the list, well, if front is null and there's nothing in the list and then you want to add something to the list, you'd probably do something like front equals a new list node that stores this value, right? But is that always what I want to say? I mean, if you look at this picture right here, let's imagine I've already somehow added three or four elements, and now I want to add a fourth one. That fourth element's supposed to go all the way over on the right after the 17, right? It's not supposed to become the front of the list. It's not going to... If I, if I set front equal to be the new value, then it would just replace... It would, it would kind of clobber things that were already in the list, right? So how do I add something to the end of a linked list? Well, let me show you some pictures. I want to hear your answer to that. But if we're doing an empty list, then we want to sort of go from having a front, which is nothing, to having a front which stores that, that value, a node with that value inside of it, right? Fine. If the, node, if the list isn't empty, like if we already have some stuff in the list, then really I need to get over here and put it over here on the right, this yellow box, right? That's where I need to get to. I don't want to directly say front equals something, because that would be over here where the 42 is at. I want to be over farther to the right of there. So you see my Socrative thing, right? Maybe I'll ask you a question about it before we write some more code. So let's load up Socrative. Uh, my fiance Mariana, came to my other class today. She, she uh, came into 106A, 
And uh, I did a Socratic question, and she voted on it, and she got the answer right. She's, uh, she's a smart one. She's not here now, don't worry. Um, we'll see, I'll, actually, I'll text her and see if she gets this one right, though, even though she's not here. So, okay, what if you're adding to a list that already has some elements in it? If you haven't signed in, there's the code for the room. Um, look at the picture here. I need to put a new element at the end of the list. So I need to write a loop that will make my current pointer walk to the right place in the list so that I can add this new thing. <coughs> Which of these loops will walk forward to the proper place to do the insertion that I need to do? A, B, C, or D. Take a look. Talk to your buddies if you want to. Vote. Go ahead. A couple more seconds and I'll show the vote count. Let's see what you voted for. <clears throat> you like answer C the most. There's some representation for several other answers, but C is the favorite. Let's see which one that is. C is while current next, not null. Um, Okay, let's talk about that. So if any of these loops, I mean, of course, what you want to remember about loops is loops stop once the test is no longer correct, once it's no longer true, right? So the way you should think of it is if you wrote any of these loops, then when the loop was done, the opposite would be true, right? If you had this loop, then at the end of the, the A loop here, while current not null, then at the end of that loop, current would be null, right? If you have while front next not null, then after that loop is over, front next would be null, right? That's the way you think of it, of course. That's how loops work. So when I was first learning linked lists, I would really have wanted to write code like A, while current isn't null. I'm walking forward until I get to null. That's the end of the list, right? So why is A the wrong answer? I mean, you guys said C, and C, I believe, is the right answer. Why isn't it A? Why don't I want to walk to the end where it's null before I do the adding? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah. You want to change the last element to point to you. You don't want to go past it and then like not know how to go back to the other one. Yeah, you said I want to make the currently the last element point forward to me, the new last element. Yeah, so I think the way you want to think of it is, um, let's see, do I have a picture? I want current to point right there, right? Why do I want current to point there? Because I can say that guy's next should point to a new piece of data that doesn't exist previously. That's what I want to do. I want to change that slash there, that null, to not be null, to do something else, to point to a new piece of data, right? In order to do that, that's where current has to be pointing. And if you think about it, if current is pointing there, what's true about current? Current next is null. Current next points to nothing. Right? Current itself isn't null. If current itself were null, that would be bad because I want current to point to that so I can go to that box and mess with that box. If current's pointing at null, I can't use current to do anything useful. Null is not some place I can go in the memory and do things. So this is a, a, a kind of a pattern that you're going to see a lot when you're writing code for linked lists, which is I'm going to start at the front and I'm going to walk forward until I get to the key place but I probably want to be just one step back from the key place because I'm always modifying the thing ahead of me, the next thing after me. In order to do that, I have to be back by one. Um, 
I've heard different analogies for this or something like where um, where you, what was the one I was hearing? It was like they're, they're they're train cars, right? Like, oh man, I don't think I can draw a train. Like, what's a train look like? Okay, there's a train car, <laughs> and then it has a little link to another train car, you know, with wheels, and then it has a little link to another train car, and you say like, oh. I want to cut the. I want to disconnect these so that the rest of the train will be saved or explode or something like that, right? So, like, if I say like, oh, I want I want this car to to be all by itself, then if I like jump up on here, that's probably the wrong place to be. Like, I probably want to be back over here, right? And then I reach forward and I cut this cord, and then that separates the train at the place that I want it to be. So you want to be like one train car back or something. I think there's like a James Bond analogy here or something, you know. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, I just want you to kind of remember this idea that it's really common that you're going to want to process a list and you're going to want to be back by one of the crucial place in the list. You probably want to say, look ahead. If the next node has this attribute that I'm looking for, that's when I'll stop. Okay? Yeah. Will it give us the code the choice if you use A, yeah. what will happen will be current will walk all the way to the end and then current will become null. Current will point to nothing. And then if you try to say current arrow next something something, you'll be trying to go to nulls next. And there's no next after null, so that would be what would be called a null pointer dereference or a segmentation fault. The program would crash. In your console, you'd get some red text. It would stop the program running. Yeah, so we don't want to do that. We like programs that, that don't do that. So um, if we want to add something... I was talking about different cases for adding. So if we're adding to an empty list, you just make it be the front. But if it's not an empty list, you have to walk to the end like we're talking about. So let's write our code to match that structure. So in our add method here, let's say if the list is empty, then I will put it at the front, else I'll do something different. How do I know if the list is empty? Like, how do I know if I should do this? If the front's null. If the front's null, then make the front be this new value, this new node. Otherwise, I have to walk to the end, or just before the end. So let's make a list node pointer called current that starts where the front is. Let's walk forward while you guys just told me while the current next isn't null. That's what you just voted for. While the current next isn't null, I will do current equals current next. And then once I get to this point, once this loop stops, I'm at the, I'm pointing to the last node. That's what current is pointing at, right? So then I'll say, I don't want you to be the last node anymore. I want there to be one more node after you. So how do I say that? Somebody want to tell me there's, I think we just need maybe one more line to, to accomplish that. What would you say, sir? Yeah. Uh, current next equals uh, yeah the pointer to the attached. Yeah, basically, let's make a new node that stores this value, and make current next point to that new node. Right. And so again, like what a lot of people try to do is they try to say current equals a new node or something like that. And I want to point out, no, no point. I keep saying point out and give you a pointer. And it's, these are just like bad puns. I'm not even trying to make, but. A lot of students have trouble with this. When you say current next equals a new node, why wouldn't you say just current equals a new node? Like, let's talk about the difference between those two, because there's a really important difference between those two lines of code. So if I go to my slide here, where's my slide? Suppose that, where is it? Let's say current is pointing to the right place, like current, I'm just going to call it cur. Current is pointing here, the last node. And I want to make the list look like that, that has a new thing at the end of it, right? If I say current equals a new list node, like it says there, then do you see like what will happen to the picture will be like, I'll make a new node. This is my new node. And I'll make current point to it, which means, hey, current, don't point there, point there. You might think, hey, it looks pretty good. But no one in the current list of things here is pointing at this thing. You know what I mean? Like the existing chain of elements starting from the front and going next, next, next should get me to the new thing. And none of these boxes in the existing chain point to there. What's really key is that this pointer right here has to point to this thing. If I create this new box and I make cur point to that, cur is nothing. Cur is not part of this list. Cur is like a temporary walk along pointer thingy. I really need to make this next pointer point to this new box. That's a crucial thing I'm trying to accomplish here. 
Do you understand? So like this piece of code really needs to say current next should be the new node. And that means <clears throat> current next, so if cur is pointing here, then current next equals will change what this thing points at. Cur next should point at, should equal a new node. So I make the new node and I make cur next point at it. Now it's part of the list because I changed it. It's not null anymore. It points to the new box. Okay. And so this leads to, I don't remember whether this is on the slide or not, but let me see if it is. Uh, no. Well, <clears throat> there's, a, there's another kind of piece of wisdom here. There's kind of two ways to change a linked list. I should probably have this in my slides. I guess I haven't. Number one is to change the front. Say front equals something. Because if the front is the start of the list, I could make the start of the list be somewhere else. And now I've changed the list. So that's the way I've changed the list. Number two is to say somebody's next equals something. Some nodes next, maybe cur next, whatever. Somebody next equals something. That will change the list. And I guess maybe, maybe you would say, oh, of course those things change the list. But like, I guess what I'm trying to draw a contrast between is like the following things uh, do not change the list. If you say like uh, cur equals new node, Nope, that doesn't change the list because you can make nodes, but if you don't connect them to the other ones, you haven't changed the list. You just made some new node off somewhere else, you know? Uh, what also doesn't change the list would be like if you said cur equals front, cur equals null. Lol, I made the list null, right? Nope, because what I did there is I, <clears throat> I made cur. If I say cur equals front, then that means cur points where front points, right? Oops, wait, wait that doesn't work. Uh, cur should point where front points. That means cur points there, right? If I say cur equals front, that's where it points. And then if I say cur equals null, I go, lol, don't point there, point to nothing. But that doesn't change what front points to, do you understand? It's almost like if I copied all the contacts out of your phone, and now I have the same contacts, and then I delete them out of my phone, it doesn't delete them out of your phone, you know what I mean? It's just a copy. So um, I guess I just want you to see that the way to change a list is to modify the front pointer or modify the next pointers of any of the nodes that come after that. Okay? So correct code is going to look like that. Okay, we now have added something to the list, right? Uh, if the front's null, put a new node there. Otherwise, start at the front, walk to the end, attach a node at the end. That's the code for adding to the end of a linked list. Let's write a couple more linked list methods. Let's write a couple more. So let's write get. If you say get at a certain index, well, how do I do that? With an array list, I just said return elements bracket i or whatever. I just jumped through the array to that place. How do I do it with a linked list representation? What would you do? Sorry, I just had a question. Oh, another question about this? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Um, so we did it with current, but aren't we supposed to be added to front? Like, how, how does it get added to front if we just have a current place? So our question is like, we did this add using current, but how does it add to front if they do it to current? Yeah, like I, I thought we were trying to change front. We're trying to, well, so the add appends to the end of the list. So like, if we say add 20, then we already have some stuff and we should walk past all the existing stuff and put 20 after it. So we don't literally have to modify front to accomplish that, but we start at the front and the front leads us to the first data, which leads us to the second, to the third, to the fourth. We walk all the way to the last one and we attach a new box after it. So why didn't we say front equals something? Well, current starts where front starts and walks somewhere else later. And now current is pointing to something that's part of the same list as front. So if we change current next and current is pointing right here, then it's the same as if we had changed front next next, basically. So if current is pointing at the list somewhere, and I say change current next, then that will change the list as though we had changed front next, 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 something, you know? Does that make sense? Those are the same place in the memory. It takes practice. We're going to do a ton of this stuff in section. Like if, this is some of the hardest stuff we do in this class, by the way. Link lists are hard. Pointers are hard. Um, was there another, any other questions so far? Get, how do you do get? If I say get element two, I can't use brackets to just jump there. Yeah. Use a 
walk a specific number of times down the list and then get what the data is on that pointer? Yeah, that sounds great. Start at the front, do a for loop to walk <coughs> forward, and then once we get to the right place, just return the data in the node that's at that place. Okay, so if we, if we make a pointer that starts at the front, we're looking at element zero. And if they want element two, we have to loop forward two times. So I think just whatever index they want, we have to go forward that many times, basically, right? We're assuming for the moment that the index is not out of bounds. Let's assume that. We could fix that later. But yeah, so if we're going to write get, get is you just said, OK, make a pointer that's got the current storing the front, so point where the front points. And now we usually use while loops to walk these pointers forward. But this is a specific case where they say, I want element 2. I don't want the last one or the first one. I want element number 2 or element number i. So let's just loop up to index. And each, that many times, let's move current forward. Let's move current to the next place. Current equals current next. And then when we get there, now supposedly current is pointing at the ith node in the list, right? And you said exactly the right thing, which is that node contains the value the user wants as its like data field. So if I'm pointing at the node with the 17 in it, I can't, you know, you might be tempted to say return current or something, but current is a list node. They don't want the list node, they want the, the int inside of the list node. They want the data, the 17. So return current data. Does that make sense? You could do something very similar to this to implement the set method, set this index to store this value. I'm just going to do that while I'm in here. Set this index to have this value. Instead, I'll say current data equals value. Same thing, just walk there, put the new data in the node. OK? Does that make sense? Um, <clears throat> how about, uh, where is this? Oops. OK, I, let's see, how much time do I have? Let's talk about inserting. I've got this as a Socrative, but I think I want to see, I just want to get more code out. So I think I'll just ask you guys. So if you're going to insert at a given index, like, uh, you know, insert at index 1, the value 9, what that means is I have to put in a new node there between the 42 and the negative 3. OK? So uh, I guess in my slide here, I'm inserting 22 at index 2. So how many times do I have, if I make a pointer that starts at the front of the list, how many times do I have to walk the pointer forward if I'm going to add a value at index i or index 2 or whatever? Do I have to walk forward i times, i plus 1, i minus 1? What do you think? Just, just, a, just asking you verbally, just what do you think? What do you say, sir? I minus one. Move forward I minus one times? Okay, why I minus one? Like the James Bond thing. Like James Bond, Bond, that's why, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to be here to add something there, right? I want to be at index one if I need to insert a new train car at index two, right? Okay, so this isn't so bad. Let's try this. Let's go here and say if we're going to do insert at an index, what we'll say is start at the front, this node current equals front, and then index minus 1 times, I'll walk forward. That's what you said, i minus 1 times. 4 in i equals 0, <coughs> i less than index minus 1, i plus plus, current equals current next. OK, now at this point, current uh, is pointing at the uh, index minus 1 this node. <laughs> uh, so I insert just after current. Right? Insert just after what uh, current is, is pointing at. OK, so that probably means I'm going to say current next equals something. Right? That's the way you put something after where you are. But maybe before I do that, I think it might be easier to like make a temporary variable. Like list node, new node is a new list node that stores the value that the person is trying to insert into the list. Let's attach this new node to the existing nodes. How do I do that? Well, if I look at my slide here, I, list node, new node. So I guess like in my slide, new node, I'll just call it new. New node points at this. But at the current moment, new node is not linked to anything else. It's just floating all by itself, right? Meanwhile, we have current, or I'm going to write cur just because I want to write shorter stuff. Cur points here. 
So tell me the statements I need to use to make this new box be part of the existing list. Can you give me one? I would add everything after that index to the end of the new one. Okay, let's make it so that after the new one comes this thing. So new node next should point at what? Equals what? Next. Current next right now points to the 17, because like, I guess you have to think of it like it's, it's in this state right now. So right now current is here, and so current next points to the 17. I want new nodes next to be the 17. Okay, so let's do that. You said new node next is the thing that's currently after current. Current next. Okay, so now we've, oops, now the new node next points there. That one's been hooked up. But what about this one? How do I get this one to, to do it? What do you, yeah. yeah, current is here, so current next should point to the new node. So let's say current next equals new node. So that's interesting. When you insert in the middle of the chain, you actually have to update two pointers. You have to say, the person before me who's current, their next should be me, and I, the new node, my next should be the rest. Here's an interesting thing. I think you mentioned this when you were giving me the other answer a second ago. The order of these two statements, what if I flip the order like that? Is that still okay? I mean, this is how we wrote it, and this I think will work. What's wrong with the other order? Do you understand? Like, let me draw that picture again. So new node is here, and current is here. Right? And what I'm asking is, could I flip these two statements? Could I say that? Could I do this one first? If I said current next equals new node, I guess, sorry, right now, right now current next points there, and these are both not uh, attached yet. If I said current next equals new node, then that would change this arrow to point here, but then it wouldn't point to the 17 anymore, right? Can't point to two things. So now who points to the 17? Nobody, right? So it's like got the balloons and it flies off into the sky and it's lost forever and we would lose the rest of our linked list. And so it's this tiny little thing in the code and if you have those two lines in the wrong order, you lose all the rest of the list. You gotta be careful with your toys here, right? And the whole train falls off the Caltrain track or whatever, right? So these two lines of code, the order of them is really important. There's one last bug in this code. There's a specific case where it doesn't work. And I only have a few seconds left, so I just want to mention this case. This code doesn't do the right thing if you're adding to the very front of the list, if the index passed is zero. And it may not be obvious why that's the case, but I guess the way I would say it is this code always puts the new node after an existing node. Do you see that? It always makes the new node be somebody's next. And if you are adding an index zero, you are nobody's next. You are the first element of the list. That's a special case. So a lot of linked list code has some kind of if else to differentiate certain cases in it. So if this was the case we were dealing with, you'd probably say if the index being passed is zero, that's a special case. Otherwise, we'll walk to the appropriate index and insert the new node. If the index is zero, then you just need to change the front to be the new list node that stores the value. But Careful, there might be some stuff that's already in the list. We don't want to say just that, because if we had 100 elements, we would replace all 100 with just one and lose the, the rest of them. So what you really want to do is say something like list node old front equals front, and then say, you know, front next equals old front, something like that. I mean, there's different ways you can write this, but... You, want to, you don't want to lose all the rest of your data in the process. Does that make sense?